All right, what's up everybody? Back again today with an awesome uh, MCAT question. But at the same time, this is also be gonna, gonna be an awesome question because I'm gonna show you how to answer it without using a formula. So let's go into it. It says there is a pipe that is one meter long. It is closed on both ends. What is the fundamental, AKA first harmonic wavelength equal to in this case? So when you read this, you might be overwhelmed because it's a pipe problem. Uh, and so one of the keywords that you will that you will notice is is that it's a pipe problem, right? The second keyword I'm going to tell you is wavelength, right? Because that's that tells you that there are waves involved here, and that's not something that is taken lightly on the MCAT. Waves are always a big deal, and for me, doing pipe problems, I know there's always a ton of formulas. We're going to try to show you how to do this intuitively. All right, I'm going to make it intuitive and try to show you how to do these problems without using formulas because I know I have these problems a lot on the MCAT and I know there are a ton of formulas but I remember that I used to follow this strategy and do them without formulas. All right. Uh, another thing that's going to happen is anytime you see the word pipe, even though it's not going to be mentioned, another thing you should be thinking of is this thing called a node and this thing called an anti-node. And you're going to see what I mean by that. But let me show you right now because we're going to get into the basics of what a node and an anti-node is. So a bit about waves. First, remember one of our keywords was wavelength. Wavelength is represented by this Greek symbol. And you'll see in this image, it shows you that one wavelength is basically this distance, right? I'm highlighting it in green in the upper left corner. But what other people don't notice is in pictures it's shown like this, but wavelength is also equal to this, okay? A wavelength is also equal to this. So sometimes students see the one on their left and they think that that's it, but this is also the same thing as one wavelength. If you see that, that's one wavelength as well. All right, now let's talk about nodes. What are nodes? So I have this image here, and I have this wave drawn on, on underneath, in the lower left corner, uh, and I drew this middle line, which I'm gonna refer to as ML. So you see that? This is known as ML, the middle line. And so nodes, nodes, if you draw a middle line through a wave, pretty much a line that goes straight through the center. Nodes are the things that are pretty much right on the middle line. So everything I'm circling right now is a node because it's on the line. It's the least displaced from the middle line. On the other hand, anti-nodes are the most displaced from the middle line. So let me show you where the anti-nodes are. This is an anti-node, right? You see this? Actually, let me do it in orange so you guys can see. So this right here at the top, is an anti-node, this is an anti-node, this is an anti-node. Anti-nodes are the most displaced from the middle line. All right, that's the point. So now that we know what nodes and anti-nodes are, I want to show you the golden rule I use to follow and answer every single pipe problem. Because for pipes, you're going to have to draw a diagram, right? I have this diagram that I've sketched out, and we're going we're gonna to draw on it for a bit. But basically, when you have a pipe that is closed, right? If it tells you that a pipe is closed, that means you have to assume that there is a node at the end of that pipe, okay? If it tells you that a pipe is open on one end, you have to assume there's an anti-node, all right? So in our case, in our case, if you look at the diagram I've drawn, we have one closed end and another closed end because we have a pipe, if we go back to the original question at the top, we have a pipe that is closed on both ends. So that means on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, we have to have Sorry, I, this is supposed to be the middle line, but we're supposed to have a node on the left and right hand side, right? We want a node here, and we want a node here. Because basically, whenever you have to draw this, you have to assume that if it's closed on both ends, you need to have a node on one end and a node on another, another end. Uh, just to make it more simple, if this had been open, if we had been told that the pipe was closed on one end and open on another end, then on this side, you would, you would have to have an anti-node. Okay, and you're gonna understand what I mean by this a bit. Um, but remember, for our case, it's closed on both ends, right? We have a pipe that is one meter long and closed on both ends. So, how can I, if you look at this diagram I've drawn, how can I connect these two closed ends in the simplest way possible, assuming there are nodes? Well, the simplest way possible to connect them would be to just go from node to node. You see how I did that? I drew a node on the left side and drew a node on the left, right side. And that's the simplest way to connect them. And because it's the simplest way to connect them, that's what's known as the first harmonic. Now, you might be saying, but Prerac, there's another way to connect them. And I'm like, yes, there are. There are a lot of ways to connect them. Because the second way you can do it, the second way is you can, 
you can draw it like this. And you'll see that in the process we added a new node in the middle, but we still technically start with a node and we end with a node. And this is the second most simple way to do it, and this is known as the second harmonic. Now, let's say you wanted to be really ambitious, and you were like, what's the third harmonic here? The third harmonic would be something like this, right? Where now you still end at the you still end and begin with a node, but you kind of have two nodes in the middle. So this is the third harmonic. The point is, see how I intuitively constructed these diagrams without having to memorize anything? That's what I wanted to show you. Whenever you have closed on both ends, you have to connect two nodes. If you had closed and open, you have to connect a node to an antinode. And remember, because this is a closed pipe, I have this reminder at the bottom that reminds you that all of this is happening in a total length of one meter, right? Because that's the whole point we drew this diagram. This whole thing is one meter long, and these waves are happening within that. So now, you see what I've drawn. Now I want to make the next connection, because I want you to know, the note says that one, one wavelength, remember one wavelength we had drawn earlier, is equal to something like this, right? So now, if you look at our first harmonic, how much of a wavelength is that? If, you're, if you look at our first harmonic, you'll notice that it's exactly half a wavelength, right? Now let's go to our second harmonic. Our second harmonic, look at that. How cool is that? That's exactly one full wavelength. And our third harmonic, right? Our third harmonic is three and a half wavelengths. It's 1.5 wavelengths. So the point is we were now able to connect the diagrams we've drawn to how many wavelengths they actually represent. And now that we've done that, we want to now answer our question because it says, what is the fundamental wavelength equal to in this case? It's asking us for the wavelength in this first case because this is the fundamental wavelength, right? Because this is the first harmonic, which is what we were being asked to analyze. And they're asking us, how long is the wavelength in the first harmonic? How long, if you were to assume this was the wave we're examining, how long is the wavelength? Well, you know that in the first harmonic, you see only half of the wavelength, right? And you know that the half of the wavelength is happening across the total length of the pipe, right? And how, how long is the total length of the pipe? The pipe is one meter long. So that means half of our wavelength is equal to one meter, right? And therefore, our wavelength has to equal two meters, right? Because if you algebraically multiply both sides by two, you get one wavelength is equal to two meters. And so with that, we just solved this entire pipe problem intuitively. I never used any of those billion formulas you get. I showed you that when you have two closed ends, you get node to node. And you can answer this question because now the answer here is two meters. So that's B. Um, I hope intuitively that kind of gives you an idea of how to solve these problems. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please ask them below. I can always do another example with a closed and open pipe and open open pipe. I can do all of those. Uh, but please, I need to get feedback. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, hope, hope these videos are helping you out. All right, see you guys later. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.